It's Cape Chronicle. I'm Jacob McClellan. There has been a lot of attention on sexual assault and domestic violence this year. From Senate subcommittee hearings on sexual violence on campus to prominent athletes and their domestic abuse. We're joined now by Brittany Talley. She's the coordinator of the Campus Violence Prevention Program at Southeast Missouri State University. Her program deals with sexual assault, domestic violence and stalking. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. First, let, let's talk a little bit about the programs that, that, that you offer students. Um, um, here on campus, I know a, a lot of the a lot of what you talk about with them is is consent. Mm -hmm. um, why do you, why spend so much time on 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 consent? Yeah, well, one of the reasons we focus on that so much with my program is sometimes I think even now when they get to college, students don't know what like healthy sex and sexual communication is, and so we spend a lot of time focused on consent. One, because we don't want there to be any gray areas with students. Like we don't want anyone to ever say, "Well, I didn't know." And it's like, well, no, you did because I told you myself. <laughs> um, so that's what we really focus on. And when we talk about consent, it's not just that we're looking for this yes. You know, we talk to students about how to get there, right? So that that person has to be of the appropriate age. They have to have the capacity and they have to be saying yes of their own free will. So you can't even get to that yes before you, unless you cross these other hurdles. And so um, it raises a lot of questions in classrooms. Students are really engaged, I find, about this topic and they want to know, um, but no one's ever talked to them about it before. So we try to just get students to talk to us honestly about their thoughts and their questions on consent. Uh, what, what do you mean by, by capacity? Yeah, capacity um, in the way that I best understand it and the way that I try to teach students really deals with a few things. So the first one is disability. You know, does that person have a developmental disability that kind of hinders their understanding of what's being asked of them? Um, are they sober, right? Have they had um, anything to drink? Have they, did they smoke a joint an hour ago? A joke I use in the classroom is, you know, did they pop Molly and now they're sweating? And, you know, the students laugh and they think I'm really hip, but I'm not. Um, and then <laughs> another part of capacity is absolutely, you know, are they conscious? And students still don't understand that sometimes because we have cases that where that's the case, that person was unconscious. So that's what I definitely touch on with capacity are those three things. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about how you work with students to um, to empower bystanders yeah. and really get bystanders to to step up and mm -hmm. and and prevent something before it occurs. Yeah. So we actually utilize the step up program. I'm glad you said that um, through Southeast, and that focuses on bystander intervention and kind of noticing the problem, taking personal responsibility, and then taking some action. So I always talk about that kind of towards the end of my presentations. Um, but this year, I actually engaged the football team um, with the help of Coach Two and some of his really awesome staff um, to participate in what we called the red zone campaign. So in football, the red zone is the 20 yard lines before the goal line, which is really cool and it's exciting. There's like a whole channel. Um, but in sexual violence prevention, the red zone is the first six weeks of the academic year when a sexual assault is more likely to occur. So we talked to the football team about, okay, this is what consent is. You know, I did a presentation with them and then we engaged them in, you know, kind of promoting this red zone, raising awareness. Um, at one game, they wore teal ribbons for sexual assault awareness on their helmets. And then on the 25th of September, all the football team was wearing a special red zone t-shirt that talked about ways to be an ally to victims and survivors of sexual assault. So it was really cool. Um, I feel like the players were really invested um, and they were proud. They were proud of what they were able to accomplish and what they'd done, so it was nice. You mentioned that the first six weeks of the of the semester mm -hmm. is kind of the, the red zone for, for sexual assault. Yeah. Why is that? What makes those first six weeks such a, um, I mean, such a dangerous time? Yeah, well, a lot of times we think it's because you know, there's new students on campus. This is the first six weeks of their college career. Um, a lot of times we see kind of the bright eyed first year students. And so there's more parties and that could be due to things like homecoming or Greek recruitment. Um, so there's more alcohol involved. And as we know, you know, alcohol is the number one date rape drug. You know, students tell me all the time it's Rufalin, which for the record, that is not a real thing everyone watching TV, Rufalin is not real. That's what they said in that movie, but it's actually Rohypnol or Rufies. So that is what it's called, not Rufalin. Just everyone is welcome. Um, but so students think that's the number one because that's when they hear about it on TV. But really it's alcohol because it does the same things as GHB and Rufies, unconsciousness, memory loss, that blackout kind of symptoms. Um, but you don't have to trick anybody into drinking beer after beer after beer after beer. Um, and so that's something that happens a lot in the first six weeks of college. So we see that that is the red zone for that reason. 
so you, you talk with a lot of campuses, uh, or sorry, a lot of classes, especially mm -hmm. the uh, freshman level classes. Mm -hmm. is, is, I mean, by, by the time a student graduates from Southeast, have, have, has every student heard these messages that, 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 yeah. that you're bringing about sexual assault? Yeah. To, uh, to, to students? Well, I hope so. <laughs> you know, I just started in July here, so, but we did have a program previously called Victory, and it was run by a woman named Melissa Odiambo, and she's actually still in our, pro in our department. She does disability services, so she did a lot of what I do. Um, so my hope is that students have heard this message at some level, and that's something that I'm working on in my program is reaching upperclassmen, because the UI 100 courses, I get invited to those, but not all of them, um, and so I try to engage upperclassmen and, and commuter students by having events and programming and things like that on campus for them to attend. Tell us a little bit about the uh, the My Student Body program. Yeah. What, what is this? So My Student Body is an online education module. There's three parts. There's an alcohol piece, a drug piece, and then a sexual assault piece. And all um, new students and transfer students under 21 are required to complete this through the Dean of Students office. Um, some professors make it a requirement for UI 100 or something like that. Um, and it's a little time consuming, but it's actually really good information. I did it as like I pretended I was a student. Um, um, which, you know, I still look like a student, so that works. Um, but I pretended I was a student and I went through it, and it was really good. Um, I think it was really interesting, and I think students can be engaged in that information. So, you know, uh, Senator Claire McCaskill mm -hmm. visited a bunch of Missouri campuses yeah. recently to talk about sexual assault on campuses. And when she was done, she said she found that there was a disconnect between what administrators were doing on campuses and what mm -hmm. students actually knew. Um, I mean, what, what are we doing here to try to, 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 to gap that disconnect mm -hmm. between students and, and administrators and what they can do to report and prevent sexual yeah. assaults? Well, one of the things we have on our campus um, that I think is a really great way to remove some of the barriers to reporting is the Good Samaritan um, clause and in our student code of conduct and basically it states that if you and a friend are out drinking and your friend is really sick and you're worried about them you can call DPS or call the RA and your sanctions are going to be lesser because you were a good bystander and we also provide amnesty for victims of sexual assault who have been drinking maybe they were underage and they're afraid that if they say well I was drinking and I was sexually assaulted well then I'll get in trouble for drinking and that's not the case um, so we do have those in place we try to promote those to students um, but that's one way we try to remove the barrier of reporting um, something else that I try to do like I said is engage with programming events um, and um, I hear a lot from upperclassmen students that they're not going to call DPS if there's an issue off campus, which is a, a problem for me because the only way I can be activated after hours is through DPS. So right now we're kind of working through some solutions for that. We've been talking today with Brittany Talley. She's the coordinator of the Campus Violence Prevention Program at Southeast Missouri State University. Thank you so much for coming by. Yeah, thank you.